This is cataractcoach.com, and today we're watching a video from a guest surgeon, Dr. Rob Melendez. So let's watch him here. So first he starts off with making two paracentesis incisions, about 180 degrees apart from each other. He's using a 0.9 millimeter blade to achieve this. He's sitting temporally. This looks like it's a right eye. Anesthetic is being put inside the eye. That's preservative free lidocaine. And now he's going to put in his viscoelastic, which is viscoat, so dispersive viscoelastic. If we look, now he's going to put a fixation ring on the eye. He's going to create his main incision. Again, he's sitting temporally, so it's a temporal incision. Now what's a little different here is he does it a little bit at the limbus, posterior to the limbus. That's a nice long inc incision, transconjunctival, two-plane incision. So that incision, of course, is going to seal very well. Now to start the Rex, he's using a cystotome, a bent 27 gauge needle. And you notice he went through the paracentesis for that. And that ensures that the anterior chamber stays formed. Now using forceps, he's creating his capsulotomy, his capsular rexus. And he's doing it in a counterclockwise manner and making it nice and round with about a five millimeter diameter. That looks just about perfect. Dr. Melendez has been in practice for coming on 20 years and has done tens of thousands of cataracts. So he's certainly a very accomplished surgeon. Hydro dissection being performed here with balanced salt solution. You can see a nicely mobile lens nucleus. That's gonna make things easy. A little rotation there to ensure that it's completely dissected. And now let's look at the setting. Looks like 65% on torsional power. That's the left side of the screen, the green numbers, zero on the longitudinal. A low or normal pressure of 46 for IOP. Aspiration is relatively low, vacuum is low. So this is a pretty typical setting to make the grooves, which he's doing now. So he's grooving a central trench in the lens nucleus. And that looks great. He's getting an appropriate depth of the groove as well. And notice how he also goes sub-incisional to make sure that he has the full length of the groove done. And so once the appropriate depth has been achieved, we can end up splitting the nucleus in two halves. So there you can see the red reflex coming through at the bottom of the trench. Careful not to sculpt too deep. And now it's time to split the nucleus. So FACO probe is in the right hand, the chopper is in the left, lens is rotated, and the pieces are split quite easily. Once, twice, and maybe a third time to fully propagate that chop. Once that's done, now you can see the settings have been changed. The vacuum's 500, flow is 25, IOP is 60, so much higher vacuum. And that's so that we can go into the piece like this, buzz into it, hold it, and bring it uh, forward for chopping. So here's a little chop maneuver. And you can see each half is then broken up into smaller pieces. These smaller pieces can then be emulsified. So you can see this has a combination of torsional and longitudinal. About 10 pulses is the rate, 10 pulses per second. And this is primarily torsional, very little longitudinal. And so buzzing into the piece here, using the chopper to chop it off. And each piece can then be emulsified. Buzz in again. And each piece can be emulsified. You notice that he buzzes into the piece with position 3. That's the top right corner of your screen. And then emulsifies the, a little bit. But then holds the piece for chopping in position 2. And so there goes the last of the piece. And the cataracts move quite easily. That looks fantastic. Now here comes the epinuclear shell. And that's aspirated out as well. And that looks clean. Now here's something a little different. That was a beautiful removal of the lens nucleus. That went great. Now Dr. Melendez is going to remove the subincisional cortex first using just an aspirator device. So there's no infusion going in the eye, just a little bit of aspiration. He's careful to uh, aspirate only a little bit at a time and back flush if needed. And now the Simcoe device is being used to remove the cortex. This is a manual device where you can do manual irrigation and aspiration at the same time. So the Simcoe device used to be far more popular and you can see from this video it's still very effective and 
works well in Dr. Melendez's hands. There's the little last bit of cortex being removed, and that looks great. At this point, time to fill the capsule bag with viscoelastic. Actually, before he does that, we're doing a little capsule polishing. So nice and easy, cleaning up and polishing of the capsule. Again, with just an aspiration device through the main incision. So that's polishing of the posterior capsule. And that looks great. Now, it's difficult to do this with just aspiration without having concurrent infusion. So this is not a technique for a novice. Here the capsule bag is filled with Ocucote. Ocucote is just HPMC, hydroxylpropyl methylcellulose, which is a nice inexpensive viscoelastic. Not great for endothelial protection, which is why at the beginning of the case, he used a different viscoelastic. HPMC is uh, good for certain things, but really not the best for corneal endothelial protection. Here comes the lens, single piece acrylic lens being implanted inside the eye. And that looks great. And now the lens can be positioned inside the capsule bag and behind that capsule rexus and using a, a little bit of a Y hook here to achieve that. And then finally, removal of the viscoelastic. So I always find it fascinating to learn from other surgeons. I didn't realize, though I've been friends with Dr. Melendez for many, many years, I didn't realize that um, he used the SIM code to do his procedure. And that's a, a, something that's a little bit different, and I think something that works really well in his hands. He's even going here behind the IOL to remove the viscoelastic.